The whole Quran is special and every part of it is going to have something to benefit you. But is it okay to have a favorite surah or to recite something repeatedly or listen to it because it resonates with you in a certain way, maybe because of where you're at in life at the moment? Absolutely. The Prophet ﷺ himself was most moved by the verses that reminded him of his responsibility. The verse in Surah An-Nisa, how will it be when we bring forth a witness upon every nation and we bring you, O Muhammad وسلم, as a witness upon them. He wept profusely وسلم, and he couldn't even handle any more of its recitation. Or the time he spent the entire night reciting just one ayah and crying. In hakim. If you punish them, O Allah, they are your slaves. But if you forgive them, verily you alone are the Almighty and the All-Wise. And he was asked وسلم, about a man who used to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas at the end of his recitation in every single prayer. And when he asked the companions to ask the man why he recites Qul Hu Allah Ahad so frequently, the man responded, he said, because it's Sifatul Rahman, wa anu uhibu an aqra abiha, because it's a description of the most merciful. And I love to read the description of the most merciful. So the Prophet said, go back and tell that man that Allah loves him because of his love for that surah. A person who is in distress may find something extremely beautiful about Surah Yusuf. Ar-Rahman and Surah Yasin are dear to so many people. Then we start to find the Prophet talking about how particular surahs benefit you in the station. So he said, recite the Qur'an for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for its reciters. Then he said, recite the two brightly illuminated chapters, Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran. He said, for on the day of resurrection, they will come as if they were two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds. To hajani an ashabihima and they will be arguing on behalf of their companions. Now imagine a person walking on the Day of Judgment and Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran are like two canopies, two flocks of birds, two clouds that are following you and that everyone is admiring and wishing they had done so as well, wishing they had committed those surahs to their memory and acted upon them as well. And that's why the Prophet said, recite Surah Al-Baqarah. For doing so produces blessing in this life and abandoning it produces regret in the next life. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned some of these other short portions that we recite on a daily basis. In another authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites ayatul kursi, Allahu la ilaha illahu, after every one of the prescribed prayers, the Prophet ﷺ said, nothing is standing between him and his entrance into paradise except for death meaning it is guaranteed for him at that point that he's going to enter into Jannah. So we've covered Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, and then Al-Ikhlas and Ayat Al-Kursi. Now there is one more companion, and this is what the scholars say is the persistent intercessor. And it is known as the Surah that is Al-Mani'a, the preventer, and it's also Al-Munjia, the rescuer. And that is Surah Al-Mulk. The Surah that the Prophet ﷺ said, that the one who recites it every night will be protected from the punishment of the grave. And some of the scholars said it prevents one from doing the deeds that warrant the punishment of the grave. And its virtue and its recitation itself prevents the punishment of the grave. It is such a beautiful and powerful surah. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ said in another narration that there are 30 verses, one surah in the Quran, that will show up on the Day of Judgment, 30 verses, and will intercede on behalf of its companion. One narration he said, It will continue to argue on behalf of its companion until that person is certainly forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this Qur'an, as much as it is shifa, it's a healing in this life, it's so much more for you in the next. And from the moment you enter your grave, to the moment of your entrance into paradise, all it keeps on bringing is elevation. And that too is true of the life that we live in now.